Welcome to Inspiration Bible Church. We are really excited you've joined us today. My name is Tracy Martin, and this is my beautiful wife, Amy. The message today is going to minister to your heart. It has with me week after week. We are so glad you joined us. And we also want to thank you for continuing to give and supporting this church. We have four ways to give, and I just want to go over those with you really quickly here. The first way is to mail a check to 3939 North Pearl Street, Tacoma, 98407. You can text to IBC to 77977. Or you can give online at www.inspirationbiblechurch.com and follow the prompts on that site. And you can also give on our app, which is IBC underscore Inspiration Bible Church. And if you're nervous about giving online, there actually is the Push Pay app makes it very simple for you. So we encourage you to give it a try. And right now, we just want to tell you that we are very excited about how God is going to minister to us today. So I really want you to get your hearts ready, get your Bibles out, and be ready to dig into the Word of God today because it will change your life. Good morning. How are you? Good. I think everybody in the room knows me, but if you don't, my name is Erin Francis, and I am here today. Um, ministering pastors Greg and Starlene are doing really good. Um, They got on the road just a little bit early for Phoenix, Arizona. Their youngest daughter, Anika, is graduating from college. (laughs) I remember when uh, Pastor Starlene told me she was pregnant with Anika. Um, And so this is quite an interesting moment for me. Um, And, um, you know, I get younger every day. And so they are there. Thank you. They are there. And then also, um, Anique's fiance is also graduating uh, from, from Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. So they are on the road there. They are doing well. They send their love and prayers. And, um, and, uh, and with that, let's open up in prayer. So Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. You are faithful and true at every turn. And I love, Lord, you're a little stinker. I love how you stack a service. Because no one knew what you told me to speak about today, yet everything so far has been in just complete agreement and lined up for this moment. And um, it's not about me at all in any way, shape, or form. It's all about you. And we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And Lord, I pray that you would speak through me and that you would help me say what you've already been speaking to them in their spirits. And when they walk away today, they know your presence And they know your voice. And Lord, that we would all continue to grow towards you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. During worship, I saw us all. Um, It was almost as if we were in the story of um, Mark chapter 5. You don't have to turn there. You can go ahead and be turned to Psalms 91. But um, it was almost during worship as if we were in the story of Mark chapter 5, and Jesus was walking along, and I just saw all of a sudden all of us there um, crawling towards his robe. And, you know, I just thought about how every single one of us got out of bed today to put God first. We, we could have done anything today. We could have slept in. We could have gone to be Martha and done some work. Our yards probably all need a little something. Our cars may need a little something. But we decided, no, no, we are going to honor the Lord. And you know, we're not here for any glory of our own. We're not here to be seen. We're here to love on the Lord. And I'm just looking out over this crowd and I'm seeing very mature believers And so many of you don't believe that about yourself. And it amazes me. I look up to you. And and I'll talk to you and you'll feel, you'll say things that make me realize you don't know how big you are in the spirit. And you you don't really appreciate how many hours you've spent in the word cumulatively. You don't really understand the amount of anointing you operate in. And it amazes me listening to you. And it's not like I'm this arrogant thing that just knows. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just, I just, um, I, I mean, I've grown in it too. I just know I operate in the anointing. I just know that I do. 
I know that when I'm standing before someone unsaved, that I'm standing there robed in righteousness in the anointing of the Lord. But does that mean that I'm just this bold person all the time, just speaking it out? No. My heart palpitates. I get concerned I'm offending them. I get concerned that I'm not being led. But then I have to just push past that. And I have to be sensitive to the audience in front of me. Um, Matt and I and the girls were blessed with a a condo for a week on a beach. And um, one of the days we were out, every day, I'm like, God, every day, bring me to someone that needs you. Help me not to forget I'm here on assignment. And we God, uh, on the beach one day, um, my husband, you think I'm the talker. He talks to everybody, and I love it. He talks to people that I'm not even talking to. I want to just do my own thing, and he's talking to somebody, and I love it. And he was talking to this one man, and this man had been in the ER in Manhattan for 40 years. Yeah. And we, we got the understanding he was a doctor. He never called him. <clears throat> he ran the ER in a hospital in Manhattan. And he has a second house where we were, and he comes just to uh, relax for a few days on the beach. And he's standing there in his swim trunks. We're standing at the ocean's edge, and he's telling us stories. And I am just completely cognizant this man needs to know the Lord. So I entered into conversation with him about that. And me and Kate and Matt are standing there. And um, he goes, I'm a Jew. And I went, fantastic. And he goes, I'm not a practicing Jew, only on Fridays. And I'm like, okay, well, that's okay. And you know, it was a starting point. Did we stand there and pray the sinner's prayer with him? Absolutely not. But did we stand there and love on him? and give a few words just to change his direction subtly. Yes. Did did I walk away going, Lord, I I didn't pray the sinner's prayer with him. I didn't do enough. No, I walked away going, you know what? I watered a little bit of seed. And I know in my spirit, I wasn't supposed to say anymore because I know at that point he would have backed up. And so you gotta be led. And you people are. You know, I could literally sit down and you all come up here and have have this because I could listen to you all all day long. And um, we're supposed to start off with this. Um, Some of you in here are business owners or you want to be business owners. If that's you, I need you to stand up. You already are a business owner or you want to be, I need you to stand up. There is an anointing in this room for you to have wisdom you have not had yet. You need wisdom. You need incredible amount of wisdom. There is a whole nother level of business that is opened up to you right now. But you have to be faithful to steward what's already in your hand, every every category. And where you know right this second you're not doing it quite right, get some wisdom on it. You need to grab a book. You need to get with somebody. And, and I love the Bible. It is the best. But you might need to go to a financial book or a, another book. You need to gain some wisdom, okay, in the area where you're weak in your business. And then you're going to have increase. But if you don't first have wisdom and how to take care of the weak areas, God doesn't want to give you the increase because it'll only make your table crumble a little bigger. So let's say that you're operating on $10 fates. He's happy with that. But you want to go to 100. And then you want to go to 100,000. You want to go to a million. Let's say he just jumps you to a million because your faith can get you to a million, but your wisdom won't sustain you at a million and you fall Great will be your fall, and that will break God's heart. So he's not going to take you to a million or a hundred thousand or even a hundred till you're faithful with ten, because he's a good daddy. It's not that he's holding you back. You might even be holding yourself back. 
So you need to be very faithful. Right this second, you know where you're weak right now. Now you need to shore up those areas. Okay, and then you need to step into, thank you, Lord. I have done my part on getting knowledge. I receive wisdom in Jesus' name, and now increase can come. So, Father, we just speak that out, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to Psalms 91, please. I had no idea, no idea what I was going to be speaking on today. And I hope the pastors will have me back at some point because I had no idea I was going to be teaching on Pastor Terry in the shower. (laughs) Ever since Pastor Greg and Starlene asked me to speak today, the phrase that has been rolling around in my heart is behind the curtain. (laughs) Pastor Terry said, I don't know what happens. I was out in my prayer time. I didn't really get a whole lot from the Lord. And I stepped behind the curtain naked as a jaybird getting a shower. And there comes the Lord. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, that is hilarious. You are funny. He's a little bit of a stinker. Pastor Terry is too. There is something about being behind the curtain. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Sometimes when you feel like you're in the dark, you're just under the shadow. You get worried, you can't hear his voice. You're listening for the wrong thing. If you listen real quiet, you'll hear his heartbeat. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will seek his refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a strong tower. For those of you who are struggling with what's going on politically, you need to write this down and you need to stand on this and you need to quote this scripture, Psalms 27, excuse me, Psalms 21, 7 through 13. Psalms 21, 7 through 13. For those of you who are struggling, like you are struggling with what's going on politically, you can say, I am struggling with what's going on politically, or I'm afraid you need to harp on Psalms 21, 7 through 13. For those of you who are struggling being afraid of COVID, you need to just camp on Psalms 23. And if you're struggling with both, you need to do both. You need freedom in those two areas. If your eyes are on either one of those things more than on the Lord, you're going to be sidetracked. And if you think things are just going to get darker and darker and worse and worse, there is a part of that that is true. But if our eyes are on on the world and on people, that part is possibly true. We are probably at the end of the end of the end of the last days. But he wouldn't have us here if he didn't think we couldn't do it. He knows we could do it. We're chosen for such a time as this. We have Esther's anointing. We have Elijah's mantle. We have Paul's words by the precious Holy Spirit. We got this. We got this. We are not meant to be afraid. Living behind the curtain is living in your secret place with the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is a form of worship. Turning everything off. And here's the last thing that I struggle turning off. Because this is a very busy place. My mind. And I, um, I picture it like this. I have my petition time with the Lord. Lord, please minister to Matt. Help him. Give him wisdom. Lord, minister to my girls, direct them, lead them. God, thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And petitions, minister to Inspiration Bible Church, minister to the pastors. I pray petitions. And, and I do pray them in the presence of the Lord, and I do pray them in faith. But then there's something, and I picture a curtain 
Not a shower curtain, but like um, when I was a girl, my family took me to New York City, and we got to see uh, several Broadway plays. And I was fascinated walking to that massive, dark auditorium. And um, we would get there a little bit early, but then the overture music would start to play, and you couldn't see the orchestra. You could just hear this delightful music of the whole overture of the play playing. And, and there was this massive, thick, thick curtain that, you know, was so expensive and so thick. And um, you knew behind that curtain was going to be a whole world that they were going to let you peer into for the next two hours. And I was fascinated with that. And I, w- I was 10 when we were here. And the curtain would open, and, and you could watch the play. And I always realized they were really good actors and actresses. And the people in the orchestra pit were really good musicians. And that they had prepared for a very long time for what they were showing us. And um, and so I don't know if that's why, but I just picture myself stepping behind that curtain. And then here, though, is where I am just having an audience with my father and my brother Jesus. And I bring the Holy Spirit on the inside of me there because the Holy Spirit's here on earth. And I picture myself in heaven in front of the throne And with Jesus right there sitting at the right hand, which if you're facing them, Jesus is literally here because he's at the right hand of the Father. How many of you all have always seen him on this side? Okay, I'm the only one. Well, he's over here. And he doesn't literally sit on God's right hand because God's like, hey, Jesus, hop off my hand. I need my hand. Um, He sits at the Father's right hand. And um, I just mentally picture myself standing there and, and worshiping him. And um, Kenneth Hagin actually saw Jesus multiple times in open visions. And he said, there is no way to describe Jesus' eyes. The only way I can describe it. And he stood there and thought a minute. And he said, it was like wells of living love. And you know, the word of God says Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Yet in Acts, it says he was standing when Stephen was being stoned. What happens on earth affects heaven. Jesus stood because a martyr was coming home. He stood in the presence of earthly glory because Stephen gave all. We don't think like that. We don't realize that what's going on here in our lives, that Jesus is greatly watching in awe of your faith. We don't don't really take the appreciation of that. We, We are so good to be humble and just say, oh, Lord, it's all about you, and he wants us to be that way. But we can do that to a fault where we don't understand how involved with us he is and how anointed we are and that we need to walk around all the time. So we go into this presence, but when we come out from the curtain, we take what happened in there with us to a man that served 40 years in the ER trauma center of Manhattan. What what an interesting moment that we would meet him a non-practicing Jew who is older, probably not long till he steps over. You know, um, many of you know me well, and you know I'm called to preach all the time. This, this is my calling. But I've just begun this thing where I'm like, do I need a pulpit to preach? When I'm at my job and I have a teenager in front of me, I don't know what their morning was like. I don't know why I'm writing them a late slip. Maybe it was awful. And I've just begun to be like, Lord, please help me see people. And he has brought me into inordinate conversations with people. What do I, what do I mean by that? I mean, it's all of a sudden very deep. Or it's all of a sudden very enlightening. Or it's all of a sudden they will say these words to me. It's funny you say that because I'll know right then I've said something God's already been saying to them.
And I know that if you all took the mic right now, you'd be saying the same thing. Aaron, this week I said this to this person or, or, wow, I didn't really know what that was, but yeah, that's happened to me. Yeah. So what happens behind the curtain here, I want, you know, um, John said in Revelation 1, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. They had tried to kill John. They could not kill John. John was exiled on an island called Patmos. What fascinates me is the order of that scripture. Because he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord day and I heard behind me the sound of a trumpet. And he turns, he does a 180 and he sees the Lord standing behind him who says, write these things I'm getting ready to tell you, write them down. John, who wrote in his gospel, the very last verse in the four gospels says, I suppose that if I tried to write down everything Jesus said and did, the world itself could not hold the books. This is that same author, unctioned by the Holy Spirit. Jesus told him, write down what I'm getting ready to tell you. So John was in the presence of the Lord. And then Jesus came and appeared to him. Like I said a second ago, I find that very interesting, the order of that scripture, instead of Jesus came and appeared to him, and then I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. No, no. He purposed to be in the spirit on the Lord's day, exiled on the Isle of Patmos, not with anyone he loved or knew, but the one he loved most he was with. And when Jesus showed up, it wasn't like, hey, Jesus, I just saw you at the Last Supper. Hey, Jesus, you died for me. Hey, Jesus, you're the one that rose from the dead. No, he fell on his face like a dead man because of the presence. Came to where he was. When we are standing in front of people at the grocery store, we are in the spirit on the Lord's day, not just Sunday, but every day. And God's presence can show up on the scene just like that because you carry it within you. We just all need to grow in the consciousness of it. We don't need more of it. We have all we need. We just need to grow in the consciousness of it. And praying petition prayers is marvelous. But at some point, you need to stop praying petition prayers. Like, you can pray them right every day, but you need to, like, set that aside. Okay, I'm done now asking for my needs to be met, and I'm going to move over into worship. And the why I picture myself stepping, stepping behind a curtain, like at a Broadway play, like a big, thick, beautiful curtain, is because I'm closing out everything else. I'm, I'm purposing to turn off my mind and the world and the Martha in me because I'm a mom. And I'm a wife. I'm a wife first, then a mom. But I'm I'm purposing to turn off that Aaron and just turn on the daughter, the worshiper. You do not have to turn here, but Matthew 27, 51. Jesus has just been crucified. He said, it is finished. And he hangs his head. And behold, the veil in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and rocks were split. So when I reference the curtain, it's not because the presence of God is still um, held up in the Ark of the Covenant behind the curtain. It's been mightily released. This curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. No, No human could have done that. God signifying, I have moved out now because of what Jesus did. I have moved out of what I told Moses to build with human hands, and I am now out among the people, and I can now live inside you because Jesus now has paid the price. So when I reference the curtain, it's not in that that's only where the presence of the Lord is. It's just that I mentally go there where it's quiet. 
and waiting on the Lord in your prayer time and waiting on the Lord when you're asking him for something. And I believe I have received. He is never withholding any good thing from us, from those who walk uprightly. But sometimes there seems to be a little time difference from when we ask to when we see it. Not when we receive it, because we receive it by faith. But when we see it, like if, if, a, if a father told a son, when you're 16, I'm going to buy you a car. At 15, at 15 years, 363 days, is it time to buy the car? Because the son had to wait on the appointed day. And God withholds no good thing, but there are times that we, are have, to, we have to stand. And then, so we see the son received the car when dad said it. He received it. He's like, he can bank on it. He knows he's getting it. But he hasn't fully stepped into the driver's seat yet of it. So when we ask, we receive and God's not withholding. Okay, there's I'm, this is kind of a bad analogy. He's not waiting on a date on the calendar. But you have to know I received when I prayed. Whether you see it right that second or not, I have it. Because my father says I have it. And waiting and again, don't get caught up in, okay, I'm waiting on the Lord. He's withholding it. When, he, when I'm done enough, he's going to give it. No, no. But I'm telling you, waiting on the Lord and knowing that you have received what you prayed for. There was a time Matt and I were prayed for something. I mean, it was just the biggest closed door. It just was like, there is no way. I mean, sign sealed, delivered, bolted down. It ain't coming. I mean, there was no way, no how, nothing. It wasn't coming. It was not coming. Okay, I mean, it's like the, the stone rolled over the doorway. It ain't coming. But we know we had prayed. And we know God is faithful. And now at that point, we did switch gears and we didn't know how God was going to answer it. Because there came a time when we're like, we know, Lord, you... We know you'll do it this way. Well, it didn't happen that way. And the door shut, bolted, super glued, gorilla glued. (laughs) Ain't happening. But him and I refused to come off that. We're like, okay, Lord, then it's going to have to be another way. We don't see a way, but we're not coming off that. See, we're in agreement, and we knew we had God's word on it. So we're not coming off that. We refuse to come off that. Now, there were times we would need to vent. We would need, we're we're souls. We're made up of mind, will, and emotions. We would need to talk to each, we wouldn't talk. You all didn't know we were going through this. We didn't tell anybody, just him and I. So we'd talk to each other about it, but we would not walk away without saying the word. If we were having a low moment, we'd just go to each other. But here's what the word says. And we'd walk away knowing it. And I'm telling you, one day that thing broke. It happened just and suddenly. And it has been exceeding abundantly beyond we could have asked or even thought. And if I stood here another moment and talked about it, I'd burst into tears over how good God is. God didn't withhold one thing from us. I don't understand why some things don't manifest the instant we pray. But he is faithful. He's so good. And when it looks bolted shut, but you know you have his word on it. Stand. The reason why Matt and I were, and the girls were where we were. The last time I ministered, I told you about my girlfriend who passed away. And um, I don't remember all the details I told you, but she was Miss America 1993. And I grew up with her. And um, she died suddenly. And um, it was one of those situations where she was um, in the hospital on, on life support. And she, um, 
everybody was believing for her healing. And um, one Sunday morning, I, I told you all this, I'm just refreshing your memory. One Sunday morning, I actually didn't even make it to church. Um, I was praying for her. I knew she was in the hospital. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have very many details, but I knew it was bad. And I was praying for her. She's a believer, praying for her. And I saw, um, I saw the wall of heaven. And I saw her standing there with her back to it, saying goodbye to her mom and dad. And um, it was as if she had been over to dinner and she was going to see him the next morning for coffee or, you know, going to go to mom's house and pick her up and they were going to go to the grocery store or something. It was that casual, her saying goodbye to them. And um, when I saw what, when I realized what I was seeing, I started really praying and digging my heels in. No, 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 you shall live and not die. You'll declare the works of the Lord by the stripes of Jesus. You're healed. I was throwing every scripture I could at it. And I never did see her walk through the door. And so I thought, after a little bit, I had a little bit of a release. And I'm like, okay, okay, she's going to live. She's going to live. Well, she did live. <laughs> um, she passed away Tuesday. That was Sunday. She passed away Tuesday. After I ministered here, um, I knew that what I'd said was on the church's Facebook, or excuse me, the church's wall, um, or um, my sermon was posted. But I didn't want to put it on my social media until I talked to Mama. So I called Mama. And I, I, actually, we were texting, and I asked her, I said, oh, sweet friend, I shared about Leanza. And I, I might have gotten a few details wrong here and there, and I shared, I'd already told her what I'd seen, and, and um, she texted back, share it, share it, share it. I want everybody to know Leanza's story. I want everybody to know that when you face the worst moment you could face. God is good. That that text I was sobbing and I'd sent her the link for her and her husband Dickie to listen to it and she texted back within 30 minutes that they, they dropped whatever they're doing and listened to it and she goes we're both sitting here sobbing. You got it exactly right. We said goodbye Sunday morning and she passed away Tuesday. So that picture that I saw, I have a friend who draws, um, and she's a friend who can just step over to the spirit super easy and, and see that kind of thing. And so I'm like, um, will you draw this? And I drew her a, a stick figure schematic, okay? You just would not even want to see what I sent the poor girl. And then I sent her pictures of Leanza and Patty and Dickie and, um, and asked her to draw it for me. And um, then I went, Lord, I need to be in this state at some point to have dinner with mom and dad. And about two weeks later, Matt looked behind his computer and said, hey, Aaron, you want to go to this state for a week? There's a free condo for us if we want it. And I said, yes, I take that. That's us. We're supposed to have dinner with Patty and Dickie Cornette. And so we, we made plans. Day before I was getting on the airplane, my mom texted me, Aaron, Patty has COVID and she's barely alive. This is the mom. So Leanza passed in October. This was a few days before Easter. And um, please don't go see her, Aaron. I went, oh, mom, I, I, I won't see her if she has COVID. And um, I kept an eye on the sister's Facebook wall. Patty passed away Easter morning. We were supposed to have dinner with them this past Thursday evening. That leaves Dickie. His daughter and his wife is in heaven. Do I understand every little thing? No. Do I know that God is good? Yeah. 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 It's interesting, um, when Matt and I were driving along in uh, where we were, we, um, Matt said, well, clearly you all now realize we did not make it to any Easter church last Sunday. We were, we were on the beach, okay, I'm just going to be honest with you. And so... Um, 
we got in a little earlier than one of our daughters. <laughs> so we had we got to the condo at 1 a.m. and we had to be at the airport at 5 a.m. to pick up the other daughter. And so on the way, um, Easter Sunday morning, Matt said, um, Kate, will you, because Kate's the DJ. I don't know if y'all know this, my, our daughter Kate. If, if she's around, there's music playing, and she's in charge of all media. Uh, she is her father's daughter. And so um, she had full command. It's always good. She does a good job. And so he goes, I need you to put on Tony Campolo. Um, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And so um, I don't know if y'all ever heard that. I highly recommend it. Uh, Matt listened to it when he was probably very close to Kate's age. And so I'm sure Kate was like, oh, what's this going to be? And immediately had us all hooked. She loves sermons anyway, but had us all hooked. And he shared a story of a man who uh, lost his wife. They were older, lost his wife. And I went to the funeral and came home and, and making this short. He took his sons in his arms, his grown sons. And he said, today was a good day. And the sons are like, what? He said, this happened exactly how I wanted it to happen. That she would go first. That's love. That is, that is love. So we now are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God moved out of what man had made, what he directed man to make for his presence to be on the earth. And he now lives in our hearts by the presence of the Holy Spirit when we ask Jesus to forgive us. It all goes through Jesus, him dying on the cross. And turn over to Galatians 2.20. It's very important that we understand we house the presence of the Lord. And it's very important that we understand how to cooperate with the presence of the Lord. And it's very important for us to understand the anointing that is on us and in us. We will not minister effectively or they're to, degree, to the degree we're supposed to minister in if we're not cognizant of that anointing and that presence. Galatians 2.20. You all read it with me. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. If that is our motto, our lives are going to be really different than us just choosing everything. It's not all about our luxury. It's about sharing what Jesus did with others. It's about growing in the grace. But there's this thing where the enemy loves to keep us bound and believing there's this thing between us and God. I mean, if we've gone to the Lord and we've asked him, forgive me of this, the enemy loves to just throw that back up like a bucket of cold water and remind us, you're not really close to God, you're not really anointed, you're not really blah, 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 blah. Mr. Caleb, would you join me, please? Let me tell you, that place that the enemy tries to keep you at, that, the Holy Spirit calls that the thieving place. The thieving place. You know you went somewhere you weren't supposed to go. You stayed longer than you wanted to stay. You did something you knew the Holy Spirit was grieved over. Now the enemy wants to make you ashamed. Don't allow it. Ask for forgiveness and know that you're forgiven. You got to know that you're forgiven. You may not feel it one little bit. Um, Corey, will you join me, please? You may not feel it, but you got to know. You can come right here, my dear. Now, Caleb, will you do me a favor? Will you drop and give me 10 push-ups? 
Everybody count with him. Thank you. You can get up. Excellent. Here you go, sir. That's for what he just did. You get to keep that. That. That is called grace. Corey does not deserve that $10. Did Corey do anything for the $10? Does Caleb rightfully deserve the $10? But Caleb doesn't get it because Caleb represents Jesus. That's grace, God's unmerited favor. Everything Jesus did, what Jesus gets from it is us. God bestows on us the glory and the gifts and the righteousness and the blessings because of what Jesus did for us. Remember the Garden of Gethsemane? Jesus went to the cross willingly. Isn't it interesting that we have an account of what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? We don't just have that Jesus tells his disciples, stop and pray and leaves and then comes back and he's arrested. We have what he prayed. Isn't that interesting, the Holy Spirit? Because now we know Jesus did all that willingly. Nobody caught Jesus off guard. Now, that's grace. Now, here's mercy. Corey, you did something wrong. And you know you did wrong. And you admit it. Okay? Drop and give me 10. <laughs> Count with him, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, what should you do? What should you do with that $10? He, you did something wrong. I have to punish somebody. What should you do with the $10? Absolutely not. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. You are graced because he did 10. That is his $10 for doing those push-ups. And then you did something wrong. And you, you're off. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you. You're off free and clear because of mercy. Because he took that for us. He took sickness. He took pain. He took our sin. And he doesn't get that $10. That's not how this works. Now, you, you walked up here slowly. What's going on? Are you sore? You got something hurting? Is it your back? Your knee? Which knee? Your left one. Caleb lay hands on his left knee. I want you to pray. Can you do anything different than you could before? Don't, don't lie. You don't have to do anything fake. Not yet, but I'm believing. There's no coincidence you were the one called up here. There's no coincidence you were prayed for by a man who's completely had his ankle 100% healed by the power of God. There's no coincidence that you, my dear, are standing on a high tower. You're anointed on a level the world does not understand, all for the glory of God. It's no coincidence. Healing power is flooding through you. And it's going to complete a healing and a cure in your knee. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You all can be seated. Don't clap. Lord, we just praise you. We thank you. Everybody just praise the Lord for a minute. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for finishing that work in Corey's knee. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm, Lord, what would you do now? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just keep pressing in just a little bit. Just picture yourself going behind that curtain. Oh, we love you, Lord. 
We praise you. You are faithful and true in all of your ways. Thank you, Father. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Just bear with me just a moment. Why don't you all stand? There are some of you who really struggle knowing you are righteous. Knowing that what Jesus did, you know it was enough, but you don't feel it. And you're so conscious of what you've done, what you have messed up, how you've done it wrong. And even though you have heartfelt asked God to forgive you, you still struggle. It still feels like somewhere it's between you and the Lord. And God said, it's gone. It's gone. I have cast that into the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. And it's as if you walk with the Lord in the cool of the day before Adam even sinned. That's how it is. And that you are a high tower. You are anointed. When you go behind that curtain, there's nothing between you and the Lord. And some of you even think that it might be something you don't know about, some hidden thing. Maybe some wrong theology you picked up somewhere along the line. That's not from God. The Holy Spirit reveals the devil conceals. There's nothing that can be hidden that the Holy Spirit, okay, here's how it works. You would be convicted when you go into the presence of the Lord or you just are like, Lord, I love you. Is there anything that I've done? Is there anything that I've done? The Holy Spirit will immediately bring to your mind what you've done if there is something. He's not just gonna hide it and make you feel like you are not righteous. That is not how God works. That is the enemy. Very close to the word enema. We are not going there. Don't fall into that trap. And you do not need to go before the Lord. Lord, forgive me of anything I don't know about. You don't need to pray that way. The Holy Spirit will tell you exactly what you need forgiveness for. And if you go before the Lord in prayer and you feel good, you don't feel like there's any, like you don't, you're like, Lord, there's nothing I can think of. And he's like, there's nothing I can think of. Come on, go, go. Let's pray. Let's get in the presence of the Lord more. You, some of you have had this thing hanging over your head. That's not God. So right now we come into agreement with you. That thing is off and it is gone in Jesus name. Whether you feel like it's gone or not, you have to know it's gone by faith. Why would you be standing here listening to this? Because God wanted to tell you that. You're free. You're righteous. Now, if you've got some pet things you're hanging on to that the Lord's convicting you about, you better get those right. You better put away those childish things Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13. You think you have one foot in heaven and one foot doing what you want to do. I'll tell you this. The Bible says lukewarm, he'll spew out of his mouth. You're either hot or cold. There's no medium. There's no in between. If you are standing there trying to decide which way you want to go to serve your flesh or to serve God, I highly recommend you run to God. Or if you are just know you're cold, there ain't anything going on between you and the Lord. I highly recommend that both those types of people pray this prayer right now with all of us. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I run from it. I don't want to do it anymore. I put it under the blood. I receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, I'm free. Sin has no hold on me. I'm free, free, free. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We seal that so. 
And if you prayed that prayer today and you either rededicated or you or put away some sin, you need to tell somebody. Or you prayed it for the first time, you need to tell somebody. You need to confess Jesus as Lord. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Wow, that was a good meal, right? I don't know about you, but I'll be getting on YouTube and watching it again because there were so many nuggets, so many things to digest that you couldn't have taken it all in right then and there. We're gonna work on growing in the consciousness, right, of the Lord and knowing that His presence, just waiting on Him, is a form of worship. Amen. All right. Have a blessed week and we will see you all later. God bless. As we call out to drive us, come alive.